Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folksbra. Today is day 12 of lockdown, it is the 7th of April, Tuesday the 7th of April 2020. We just look at our stats quickly, uh, the number of infections recorded so far, so far 1,686. One more death up on yesterday, we have 12 today. A down day percentage of growth from yesterday, 1.87%. Number of tests we've conducted today, 58,098 tests. So you can see we did just under 2,000 tests yesterday. Our infection rate, 2.9%. Population stays the same. Percentage of the population tested now is 0.1%. Our mortality rate is 0.71%. I didn't fill in our round exchange rate, it is what, round to the dollar is now 18.57, so we can just put that in, I'm just leaving the highest point there. So our round has actually declined 14%, unfortunately you can't see it in paint because it's a screen grab, I, uh, OBS Studio doesn't uh, do screen grabs for Excel, it's got something to do with uh, Microsoft's interface for it. So yeah, these stats are are what they are. Interestingly enough, on the news they are saying uh, we really don't know what is coming because we are so far behind on the tests. But we're going to leave that as that. I don't want to uh, create paranoia or whatever. Today I'm not shooting with my Lavalier microphone because I want to see how the iPhone mic works. Um, uh, because when I shoot with the Lavalier microphone on my laptop it picks up a lot of background noise, electronic noise through the computer and I'm not sure why it's doing that. So let's jump over to, to Firefox and let's see what is happening in the news. Just refresh that. Um, interestingly enough, uh, let's deal with these idiots, the taxis. Um, yesterday in the news, they were basically saying that the government and private uh, enterprise must give them roughly 3.5 billion rand for their own little uh, uh, provident fund. And I was also wondering about the times that they're allowed to drive, because to me it seems like they are uh, driving at all times of the day, regardless of whatever. Anyway, in this article they've actually said they are going to uh, raise it, uh, it will be managed by professionals, which include auditors, lawyers and accountants, they are right. Um, but they're also appealing to the private sector and to the government to come on board to help contribute. So they're saying they are going to raise the money. I don't know where they're going to get that money from, but anyway. Interestingly enough, what I want to highlight is the times that they're allowed to be driving, because I've been watching this, and to me it seems like they are on the road the whole day and most of the evening. So from 4 to 5 in the morning, empty taxis are permitted on the road to pick up commuters 5 to 10, that out to three commuters at a 70% licensed capacity. At 10 to 11, all outstanding commuters must be dropped off and taxis must be parked. Uh, then they're back on the roads between 3 and 4 to pick up commuters. So basically from 11 to 3, they shouldn't be on the road. And then they're allowed between 4 and 8 in the evening to ferry 70% licensed capacity again. And then from 8 to 9, they must get back to their depots and whatever. So that is the official times that they're allowed to run. Um, there was one locked up yesterday in the Joburg CBD, apparently for carrying too many people, not being licensed, and, 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 and. But uh, it is what it is. We don't want to go too much into that. Uh, we want to come back to these tests. So, I had an interesting discussion with a colleague yesterday, um, and he was telling me about this test, and it happens to be my boss, but anyway. 
I just want to to draw your attention to this thing. They call it the gene expert. And now the, this machine can t uh, do the test and have a turnaround within 45 minutes. But it still works with the genetics of the machine. So it's not a it's not a you spit on this, they put it in a reagent and then they tell you what's going. It's a, it's still looking at the genetics of of the proteins and all those sort of things to find out if you have COVID. And this is what they are trying to get into South Africa and to equip uh, our, our rollout tests with. Um, still, um, we are behind on the testing curve. Um, and they've admitted as such, this article was written yesterday, the 6th of the 4th at quarter past 6. Um, our testing criteria are reactive and restrictive. This is from Minister of Health, Sveli Mkise. This means we don't have a true picture, he said previously in his daily briefing. And we don't. We are far behind on the testing curve. Um, And he goes on to explain about this uh, this this machine. It's a, uh, the smallest version is, is the size of a desktop computer. It takes uh, certain cartridges that they put in. Um, it's loaded with a sputum from the patient, in other words, the, the sample that they take from you, and then chemical reagents which allow the machine to detect genetic material of TB or now coronavirus. Apparently, they've modified it for coronavirus. It takes 45 minutes to give a result. Um, Uh, they are trying to get hold of these things or get more of them. And he goes on to talk, uh, uh, Professor Bavesh Khanna, Director for the Center of Ex Excellence in Biomedical Tuberculosis Research. Uh, he says it's, uh, it's safe, fast and easy to use. And he explained that health workers take a sample from the patient and put it in the cartridge. Within the cartridge, the genetic material of the coronavirus is released. So they're still looking at the genetics. It's safe because it's a closed system. So I, it's probably some sort of, I don't know. I don't know, like a gas chromatograph or something like that. But I don't specifically think it's a gas chromatograph, but I'm, something like that. It's a closed, closed system. So the sample will go in and everything's closed. It's not can't get into contact with whatever. Um, but the important thing is that it's still a genetic test, which is, as far as we know, the only way to, to, uh, to test it. Um, uh, then they talk about this. Uh, uh, it's all about pricing and fighting and Interestingly, they come down to the antibody test, and this is the thing that Jessa from iPad Rehab was talking about, and I've linked a video before, so you can go back and find that. Um, in South Africa, we're doing about 5,000 tests in 24 hours. Well, if we look at the stats that they're releasing, sorry, from 56,800, so, so 56,900, uh, so that's 100, uh, it's 1,100, say 1,200 tests up from yesterday. So they're not even getting the 5,000. We can go back and do the numbers in here. And we're doing just over 3,000 tests a day. So even from yesterday to the, well, to the previous day, because our stats are 24 hours behind. But from the previous day to yesterday, or the day before, yeah, we only did 1,200 tests, so we're varying between 1,200 and 3,000. So this uh, 5,000 number that they're talking about here is very optimistic. They're not getting even to that. Uh, they Hopefully they'll increase, the, the later this month, they'll increase the test to 15,000 and by the end of April to 36,000 tests. Well, that's the plan, as he said. Uh, the proof will be in the execution. Uh, we can only hold thumbs and think positively, and uh, hopefully he he's right and they will will get there. Uh, but then they're going on about this antibody tests. 
They're hoping that it will be usable in South Africa. These can be done by nurses at a clinic or hospital and are usually much cheaper than lab tests and give results in less than 20 minutes. But again, now we come back to Jess's argument. They have a shortcoming because they test for antibodies, not the virus directly. The person who has been infected and recovered will test positive. The further lab test that checks directly for the virus will then need to be conducted. So this is this uh, hit and hit and miss um, test, uh, that this makeshift thing that you, like the pregnancy test that you pee on and whatever, and then gives you, well, I don't think you pee on it, but, but it's like that, and uh, the, the, they are admitting that it's very hit and miss, and anyway, uh, they say further tests would be, you need to con be conducted to see if they're infected or are infectious. But it can take up to 14 days from infection for antibodies to develop. So the incub incubation period, I think, is, well, I think that's what they call the incubation period, is 14 days. Uh, nevertheless, antibody tests, when they eventually are used, will help surveillance of the epidemic and contribute to our understanding of it in South Africa. So I don't think they're ever going to make it their primary testing medium. I think they're going to use it for something else, or just for the surveillance or whatever. So the good news is that they're trying to get more of these gene, ex, gene, gene expert machines, which is still a good thing because we're still dealing with the genetics of it, so we have a more accurate test. Um, I just want to come back to this Twazik, uh, Mr. I like my hats, so he uh, basically, people are reacting on his uh, on his comments about where he wants to continue the lock uh, the lockdown on booze, or the prohibition of uh, sales of alcohol way after or well, after the lockdown period is 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 done, and uh, people are just reacting to it, and it's quite good. Um, the last time someone tried this, it created the, the largest crime syndicate in the world, even. A marginally competent minister of police should know that and if you're not aware what he's referring to here, but young, um, they are referring, this Jack Claxton is referring to uh, prohibition that happened in the United States of America in, uh, well, in the 20s, 1920, roughly to 1930, or was it 33, somewhere there, 1920 to 1933, and that, um, gave rise to the mafia that got on the bandwagon, uh, Al Capone and those guys, and they were selling bootleg, bootleg liquor, and of course they made a lot of money. So prohibition just doesn't work. You will have people selling black market booze, that's given. I mean, uh, for us, those of us that brew our own beer or whatever, well, we haven't really got a problem. They can't ban the sale, the sale of ingredients to brew, and they really can't control the home brew environment. So, uh, again, shooting his, his mouth off and whatever. Uh, interesting enough, he hasn't actually said anything in the news yesterday, so I think maybe, well, a lot of these idiots and, and ministers have not been shooting their mouths off yesterday, so I wonder if they're not being... Uh, reigned in um yeah history lesson from mr Thale. read up on the consequences of prohibition in the usa and stop treating voters as vassals <laughs> uh and then uh, yeah there, there's a lot of comments on it whatever um there was some twit on the radio yesterday afternoon. I don't know what his political party is, but it's got a lot of A's and F's and bullshit in it. And he was trying to defend this thing uh, where the news had to apologize to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This tweet was now trying to defend uh, why we cannot trust anything coming from America. We, we, we must test the test that they're giving us. Or we must... Uh, um, people like that really shouldn't be allowed in politics. They shouldn't be given uh, an earpiece to the masses. Uh, the, 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 the problem, the problem now is either you're a leader and you're actually caring for the people and uh, the consequences of this uh, fallout, instead of trying to uh, gain political points. Uh, 
political point scoring should be the last thing on your mind now. So I personally feel, excuse me, that the news should not be giving these people the time of day uh, at the moment. They, they're really just wasting uh, airspace where we could uh, have maybe more announcements or whatever from our, our guys in charge telling us what the hell is going on, status updates or whatever. I, I would prefer that. Um, last night I was listening to the Money Show. Uh, it's a show that runs between um, 6 and 8 on weekdays and it's hosted by a guy called Bruce Whitfield. And he had quite a, a very interesting comment. Uh, let's see if I can Google this uh, this guy. Anyway, his comment was you know, during the shutdown because a lot of our schools are closed and, and and it's difficult. A lot of people do not have access to the internet in South Africa. That is the reality. That is how it is. So this e-learning that the privileged schools are able to conduct is, is fine. But what about the, the people in the uh, rural areas? And he, if you're old like me, or a little bit older, you will remember when you were growing up and you were doing school, there was a guy called uh, William Smith. There we go, Maths. Uh, there was this guy. Uh, Let's see where you Wikipedia. Where is his picture? No picture. Oh. Okay, well there you can see him there. And there's William Smith and there's William Smith. And <coughs> William Smith used to have this show on uh, on TV and he would give you maths lessons and science, physics, uh, chemistry lessons and this would screen on the TV and this would help uh, from Sherbet if I remember correctly, it was from standard, standard 8, 9 and 10 or was standard 8, 9 and 10 now, I don't know what it is now so I think it's grade 12 for matric, grade 11 for standard 9 and grade 10 for standard 8. Either way, this guy used to give tutorials and whatever. And what Bruce was saying was maybe they should get this guy and film him to give maths lessons and science lessons and to stream it or to screen it on SABC channels for the kids that are sitting home in the rural areas because they might not have internet but the majority of the families have TVs and they pick up SABC and this can help them carry on at least with their curriculum and I actually thought that was a I thought that was a very a very insightful idea in the, in the madness because we don't really have many constructive ideas that are coming out at this stage we have a lot of nonsense and, and, and shooting from the hip, but I thought Bruce's idea of getting William Smith or the equivalent, but I, I remember William and he was very, 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 very good. I mean, if it wasn't for this, like, I don't think it would have passed high school maths, uh, really. Uh, he was very good. So it was a very good uh, idea from um, Bruce and I will give him my thumbs up for that. So if we come to our news We'll start with EWN. Uh, Western Cape man becomes South Africa's 12th COVID-19 victim as infections, as infections hit 1,686. Uh, COVID-19 quick insights. Uh, the problem that I have with EWN is they are typically, they're always playing catch up. They don't really normally have Uh, fresh news, they are playing catch up always mainly to News 24 or whatever, it's very rare that they will have a story before News 24 and then um, a lot of the time the journalist whoever will write this article will do a hatchet job on the News 24 article so sometimes uh, I look at EWN if I just want a quick uh, squiz 
Otherwise, if I really want the in-depth story, I'll go to News24. The only problem with News24 is they don't allow comments on their story, where EWN does. EWN allows people to comment on the stories. So, we see what's trending. Uh, Western Cape Man becomes South Africa's 12th COVID-19 victim. Uh, this actress, Vanolia Mashejo, uh, she passed away in her sleep. Not particularly old, in her, in her 50s. Not a very old lady at all. Uh, Becky Teller with his ban on alcohol comments <laughs> leave a bit of taste for some. Uh, British PM, so if you don't know, uh, Boris Johnson is now in intensive care in the UK with COVID. And watch a timeline of the first month of coronavirus in South Africa. I'm not interested in that. Um, concerns over South Africa's economic growth if COVID-19 is not controlled soon. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about it. The only thing we can do is to stay in lockdown and prevent it from spreading. We have to let the thing die a natural death and the only way you can do that is to stay in isolation so it doesn't have a host. It, it, it can't. There's nobody to go to and then it will croak. Farmers in distress due to COVID-19 given two weeks to apply for assistance. Oh, that's a positive thing. Iswatini confirms 10th COVID-19 case. I don't know where the hell that is. With our name changes, I really don't know. Uh, SAMA fights compulsory quarantine of Lopopo doctors. China reports no new coronavirus deaths for the first time. Uh, Boris in, in hospital in ICU. I uh, don't know what this guy did, Cardinal Pell. In Australia, he must have done something. Uh, a quit will be earned in the place in the most high profile case of alleged historical sex abuse to rock the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, well then, uh, not really in what I'm interested in. Unfortunately, the U.S. coronavirus death topped 2,000, uh, 10,000. Uh, very, very sad. It is spreading like wildfire in the in the in the states. Um, the timeline, FIFA. We don't care about FIFA. They're cutting wages and, and whatever. Um, the Rand firma has risk takers return. Stocks up 3.29 percent. Obviously, the market is very is very volatile now, and people are. There's money to be made, there's money to be lost. Uh, I personally, I'm not a speculator, so I really wouldn't want to be in the market if I invest. I invest uh, for long term. But there are guys in, and girls out there in the market making money. No problem. Good for them, if you can. You'll think. General mask use okay, we're hand washing, distancing, difficult. World Health Organization. Yes, this is big debate going on about when you should wear a mask, who should wear a mask, and all, all this. I personally think just stay in isolation. Uh, Kenyan president halts movement in areas affected by the coronavirus. Videos I don't care about local. Shame me out. There's this actress that uh, passed away. Uh, South Africa's supply chain, food supply chain, to be closely monitored during the lockdown. And he has this twit Joburg taxi driver arrested for breaking lockdown rules. No license, overcrowding, etc, etc, etc. Uh, ICASA, that's our independent communications authority. They are making more spectrum available to meet the internet demand. Good for them. I don't know what Pam Golding has got to do with this. Some celebrating companies cut working hours, salaries over lockdown. Well, we know that was coming, but um, property heavyweight Pam Golding was also not immune to the crunch with the closing of the deeds office, meaning no business for now. But I can't understand. We've taken a view within our branch company to reduce working hours by 30% and as a consequence to reduce salaries by 30%. Then how is this an essential thing? Unless they're working from home. Uh, like we, my company, we all working from home. And, and yes, with engineering, certain 
aspects of your job can be done from home. Um, you're writing specifications, you're doing basic design work, uh, calculations, data sheets, whatever. Uh, yes, so certain things can be done from home. But Denosa accuses Netcare of neglect after death at Durban Hospital. Uh, for those of you not aware, um, there was a hospital in uh, Natal where I don't know, is it the same thing? No, it was 11 or something people, 11 nurses and six doctors, yeah, it's the same hospital. Uh, basically 11, yeah, 11 nurses, six doctors, bang, overnight uh, tested positive for the coronavirus and so they shut down this hospital. And now the Democratic, Nur Democratic Nursing Organization of South Africa has accused Netcare of failing to protect staff and patients at the St. Augustine's Hospital in Durban. Uh, four of the six patients who died due to COVID-19 in KwaZulu-Natal were treated at that hospital. Now, I really don't think this is the time to be slinging mud at each other. I actually think the time now is to pull together and to beat this thing. Um, uh, let the mud slinging commence at the end of it with those of us that are left behind and to now start uh, you're not doing this you're not doing uh, point fingers point it is stupidity let the mud slinging commence at the end of it and with those of us that are left behind so yeah interesting uh, lockdown Standard Bank offers 25% cash relief for insurance customers. Teddy Bear Clinic records 25 cases of child abuse during lockdown. You see, this is the sad thing in lockdown. Um, regardless of booze or not, and I've spoken about this before, in South Africa we we don't treat the cause we don't address the cause of the problem. We treat the symptoms, if that makes sense. So this guy, whatever, is locked down, he blocks him with his wife and whatever. We'll treat the symptom, we'll say, oh no, he had too much to drink or he didn't have anything to drink or whatever. We don't actually address the cause. Why is this oak doing this? It's the person that did it and that's what they should be addressing, not... Yeah, anyway. Uh, Matsaledi, uh, City of Cape Town, withdrew from plan to relocate foreign nationals at last minute. Again, stupidity. Uh, politics, we need God. Parliament denies DA request to establish oversight committee during the lockdown. And the DA wants to... Uh, wants a committee to address uh, police brutality amongst other things and they went to parliament and they said please make this committee and the parliament basically said get knotted we're not doing that live blog uh, but you see it's four days ago so this is the, 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 the four days ago why is it still in the news so, yeah. really EWN really business we could, uh, COVID-19 could see our economy shrink by 19%. The Deezer, panic buying may lead to unnecessary food price hikes. Yes, guys, you don't need to buy the whole shelf of baked beans, buy what you need. Why are we panic buying? I don't know. Treasury is set to take a 19 billion rand, billion rand loan from the new development bank to fight COVID-19 Africa. Uh, our friends up north, and I'm actually born in Zimbabwe, I was born in Rhodesia, so it is a soft spot, but for anyway, Zimbabwe police accused of media assault in the lockdown. Ethiopia reports its first death of a patient, of a COVID-19 patient, and surveys in lockdown poses challenges for raw material imports. The world... <laughs> the EU virus crisis is EU's biggest test since its founding. Yeah. Merkel. Je 
Dan Pian promises propose a state of emergency over virus. One trillion dollar stimulus. China sees rise in asymptomatic coronavirus cases. Sport I don't particularly care about. And lifestyle. No, nothing really there. News 24. Really. Uh, most read. We have, okay, they're live, basically, uh, cases at 1686 in South Africa, US death pass to 10,000 milestone. Sex with coronavirus, should you be intimate with whom? <laughs> Apology to Bill and Melinda Gates, coronavirus morning update, another two deaths in SA, UK, PM in hospital, and the 2M rule, the 2 meter rule is, and is the 2 meter rule enough? ANC partners turn to Ramaphosa to stop in Bowenny calling on World Bank for IMF for bailout. The ANC and its tripartite alliance partners, the South African Communist Party and Kosata have hit back at the Finance Minister, rejecting his comments that he would turn to the World Bank and International Monetary Fund for economic relief if the need arises now. Uh, again, this is just, um, we reject this proposal. We instead re reaffirm the need to safeguard South Africa's dem democratic national sovereignty, the fundamental right to self-determination, our independence, which is non-negotiable, even in the midst of a crisis. Now, what these clowns are going on about is if Tito, Tito Mbaweni has to go to the World Bank and IMF and get big money because we're in such downgraded status such shit uh, that money comes with conditions in other words the IMF the World Bank they step in and they say okay great we'll give you this money but this is how you spend it now obviously the South African Communist Party and Casado don't like that they don't like being told how to go and spend that money sorry you got us there now you deal with it if you need the money and these guys come and say you must spend it properly and they control how you spend it. Good. If there is no control and you be, become like another Zimbabwe to enrich yourself, then we're all fucked. So, again, you know, stupidity. This oak, Tito, Tito Mboweni, is the finance minister. He must do his job. And that's what he's appointed to do. And he doesn't answer to the Communist Party or Kasata, you know, trade unions. Again, putting their fingers in it, uh, they should get knotted. Anyway, we'll move on from that. It just makes me crossed, very, very cross. Um, what complaints you can and cannot make against the police during the national lockdown? Okay, Health 24, the latest update, blah, blah, blah. Lockdown, some Alexandra residents ready to defy quarantine orders if they test positive. What is this about? This was 41 minutes ago. Some residents of the Setwetla, I can't pronounce these names, sorry. Uh, so are seemingly ready to dis disobey the government efforts to tackle COVID-19. The area which is highly congested is where a resident who tested positive was from and was tracked to Samin of the allegedly fled there. Uh, yes. So they, the guys test positive and they run away. Uh, those who settled close to the man told News 24 Monday that there was no way they could test positive. Okay, so what the hell are they complaining about? Oh, I will not go into isolation. Uh, wait a minute. <coughs> uh, 
I have no symptoms of the coronavirus. I will all, I also will not go into isolation. The person who tested positive earlier is negative now, and I don't think that he was ever positive at all. Yeah, in Sichuala, we don't have the coronavirus. If my neighbor doesn't have the virus, it means we who live next to his home are also negative. Another guy he vows he will not go into isolation regardless of the outstanding results. Okay. Again, this is the problem in South Africa. We, this lockdown is interfering with people's democratic rights, apparently. So why must we go into isolation to stop the spread of the virus? Anyway, six COVID-19 myths debunked. Fake news, no COVID-19 testing kits are not. No, okay. No COVID-19 test, testing kits are not contaminated. Here's some clown was on the news somewhere or social media saying uh, that uh, the COVID-19 testing kits are contaminated with it and the people didn't want to take the tests. Uh, We've been through that one. Uh, you can now send ShopRite uh, Shoprite Garrity voucher straight to somebody's phone. NASPERS completes 22.4 billion share buyback program. Nelson Mandela Bay now has 16 cases, three more linked to funeral test positive. And guys stay in lockdown. This is related to these folks that all decided they're going to a funeral and a whole bunch of the fuckers tested positive for this thing. Um, how South Africa will test for the virus. Um, this is actually quite good. I'm going to see if I can find this on video. It's a guy that's made a video from his drone and he's flown it over uh, parts of Cape Town had to show how dead the city is um, during the lockdown. It's actually, I'm very impressed with this. Um, Cape Townians are doing their thing and they are actually staying at home and uh, that's what we should be doing in, in Joburg. But anyway, I'll see if I can find a a link to that in YouTube and link it at the end of this video. Uh, where were we? South African taxi gives, they say taxi gives, taxi gives taxi bosses reprieve on monthly installment. Doesn't make sense. Uh, we saw that one yesterday, see you in court. There we go. Here's this tweet. A man who posted fake contaminated, contaminated COVID-19 test kits. Video arrested. Good. Uh, I think they should be doing more about fake news. Uh, more in this section. Feel good. PE woman completes, uh, Port Elizabeth woman completes Iron Man in her backyard to raise 100,000 for disabled man. Yeah, we know some talk up to announce an independent relief fund for the taxi industry. Uh, first coronavirus case reported in the prison in East London. Um, Africa, we don't. Uh, really care about it. The world. Uh, the Australian Melissa. 
child sex abuse in the Roman Catholic Church and that's been freed. Uh, no, 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 we don't care about anything. Sport, I don't care about business. All the sales, all the sales growth fueled by panic buying won't be sustained. No, it won't be because people will run out of money. Remember, you're on lockdown, you're not working. Um, new development bank loan helps, but we need more. Yes, this is quite interesting. There is an article in the Business Day uh, opinion piece by an economist, and she's basically saying, even if we took, I can't remember the figures, 10 percent of the 60 million population and gave them a thousand rand a month or whatever that the amount of money that these guys are going to the new development bank loan for or to the new to get a loan from the new development bank won't even cover that so it's a bit of an eye-opener how much money we actually do need i think the figure came out at 30 billion which is uh, still cheaper than the 40 billion that SA is asking for for the loss over this time. So get rid of SA, then you've got an extra 10 billion. Um, today's business update and why you'll now get two COVID 19 SMSs a day. I've been receiving strange SMSs and I just mark them all as read. Maybe you must go back and look at it. Uh, billionaires, uh, the Ruperts and the Oppenheimers with their one billion rand uh, donation. Uh, yeah, the Rupert one billion fund, one billion rand fund to help small business. Business is oversubscribed in a matter of days and uh, open I'm at 20, over 20,000 people stand to benefit. Uh, business Insider claiming money from the UIF, everything you need to know. UIF, the unemployed insurance fund, so let's uh, have a look at what they have to say. Uh, unemployment Insurance Fund has introduced a special new coronavirus benefit aimed at workers affected by the pandemic. Employers need to apply for the coronavirus benefit if they can't afford to pay their workers. Okay, so employers, the companies, they need to go out and apply for this. The maximum amount recipients will get is 6,730 Rand per month. So if you're earning 50 Rand a month and your employer goes for, applies for this, you're now going to get 6,730 Rand a month. Um, everyone who works more than 24 hours a week should contribute 1% of their income. Okay, that's just a normal UIF. Um, uh, who can claim if you lost your job you can claim from UIF your company reduced your working hours you can also put in a claim but if your company put you on unpaid leave during this time or you have been laid off temporarily or if a company can only afford to pay part of your salary you may also you may get a special payout from the UIF as part of the COVID-19 COVID-19 temporary relief scheme also known as the special temporary employee employer relief scheme or TERS. How does it work? Uh, the business has to apply to the UIF to get the money to get money to pay workers. It will have to prove that it suffered a severe knock from the lockdown. If approved the UIF will pay out money per worker for up to three months. Unlike normal UIF benefits which is paid to workers, the money may be distributed first to the company which will then pay the workers. This arrangement has not been finalized though. And also, unlike the normal UIF benefits, you don't have to, you don't have to have enough credits with the fund to claim the money. The normal UIF rule is that you could get one day's power for every four days work up to certain maximums. But this falls away from the new coronavirus benefit. All, the, all workers at approved companies will get payments. Uh, businesses must have been registered with the UIF before the crisis started to qualify. Well, that makes sense. How much will I get? The amounts paid will be a percentage of an employee's salary according to the legislated sliding scale from 38% highest earners to 60% lowest earners. The maximum you will get is 6,730. The sliding scale stops at 17,702. 
but if the maximum you get is six, uh, this is all workers earning more than this, but only get the thirty-eight percent maximum benefit. So if the minimum amount will not be below the minimum wage. So the minimum is three thousand five hundred. It will work on the same principle as maternity benefits. If a company can still afford to pay employees as part of their salaries, the tourist money will top up these payments, but employees can't earn more than 100% of their current salaries. Now this is confusing, because the maximum you can get is 6,730 maybe for this scheme for tours, and then your normal UIF sliding scale is there. Okay. Uh, currently, the turnaround time for payment on approved unemployment claims is 15 working days. Time frame is not yet clear for the new benefits. Well, that should be interesting to see how they implement it. Anyway, uh, the Cape Town video, I'm going to try and find that on YouTube and link it in. says 5G spectrum is now wide open to help fight COVID-19 but only until November. What are they on about? Okay, so South African cell phone operators can now get their hands on new blocks of radio frequency of the radio frequency spectrum almost immediately under rules meant to help with communications. This inc that includes prime chunks of spectrum for 5G services. Okay. Uh, the catch, the operators only get the spectrum up to 30th of November 2020. And it could cost them 100,000 rand per day if they keep using it. Blah -de blah blah blah. Entertainment, we don't care about so much. Uh, the city press. What about our Muti, traditional healers, herbalists? want their services recognized as essential. As how to get your copy of the City Press during lockdown. COVID-19 tracking the movement of a killer virus. Dads, this is how to cope with lockdown. Hoysan group defies lockdown to camp in green buildings. Uh, South Africans shine during lockdowns. Companies under fire from operating during lockdown. And COVID-19, South Africa's looming ventilation shortage. Tick. Bar Apple is now producing face shields. Bar. Facebook is wrong. Ah, who cares about Facebook? Green two cats have tested positive for the coronaviruses, but uh, experts still don't think pets infect humans. Opinion pieces. Uh, Dan Crick, we need to monitor food security as close as our health. Uh, very obvious. Uh, stop panic buying and things like that. Uh, yeah, from what we understand, there is more than enough food to go around. But remember, you don't want trucks on the road every day, all day. Uh, opinion. Advocacy, new privacy rules for COVID-19 tracking a step in the right direction, but Okay, health 24, wheels 24, woman 24, travel, parents, partner content, food, careers, <laughs> and property. So that is where we are at on today the 7th of April 2020 a positive note is that the ministers are not shouting the odds off in the in the news they're making complete twits of themselves so uh, let's hope that the testing uh, rate can uh, pick up soon because the, the quicker we start testing the masses of the population, the better, the, the sooner we have a, a better idea of what and 
or what this thing is doing and how it's growing and we can actually form some patterns and statistical data for this so we can do some pattern analysis and that sort of stuff so as always um, from my side uh, stay at home stay safe take care and we will catch you in the next episode cheers